Since the beginning of time, mankind has been forced to compete for survival. This spirit of competition has reached a pinnacle in the relationship of two best friends who battle against each other. Why? Glory for the winner. Humiliation for the loser. This is Kenny versus Spenny. Welcome to Wreck My Podcast for this week. We're doing a bit of a deep cut. This is, this is one that I'm curious we've talked about if like a lot of people will actually know it or if this will spur a lot of people to go check it out because it is free on YouTube right now, all six seasons of this show. But I'm here with the most beautiful person who probably ever watched this show. <laughs> My Hello. wife, Madison. Hello, yes. Yeah. Um, you were a big fan. So this show is Kenny versus Spenny. Yeah. Now, if if you listeners don't have never heard of this show before, it's a Canadian show. Mm -hmm. And it was a reality TV show that I think is kind of like Jackass meets Impractical Jokers meets Viva La Bam, kind of. Like, right. It's all those like reality show things of just people being stupid and doing dumb things. And like yeah. Impractical Jokers are kind of like the PG version of this. Yes, this is definitely not so PG. Yeah. Some episodes, but most episodes not so much. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about this, Madison. <laughs> like, because I have yeah. never saw this. I never even heard of this until we started dating years yeah. ago, and then you brought this to my well, attention. Well, first, can we tell the good people that we actually did get somebody writing in that said we did. they so, wanted us yeah, to cover this. Yeah, the story this. is, so thank you. On the, I think it was the Rush Hour episode we yes. did together that you brought up Kenny versus Spenny, and I was like, if I get even one person <laughs> that tells me what that is, which just has like over a million views for every episode, for on, every episode. on YouTube. So obviously people know what this is, but yeah. uh, Ron of the Comic Book Rundown podcast wrote in and was like, hey... You should do it. It would yeah. be totally cool. So he, he knows what it is. Hopefully yeah. more of you out there know what it is. I feel like this is one of those things that, yeah, it's just like kind of quintessential, like early 2000s. Mm -hmm. And I feel like this was one of those ones. Like, I feel like Jordan always tries to tell me like, oh, yeah, remember this show growing up? And I'm always like, no, like. I feel like I have like not as much knowledge about like the general like very popular stuff but stuff like this mm -hmm. like I just know these random things like Kenny versus Spenny was like my high school time when I just thought this was like the funniest thing yeah which is that was ever invented it's so funny because like I brought up hey you ever watch Jackass and you're like no I've no, never seen it like, I've never seen it that is such more like a mainstream version of yes. what this is but you're like I know this <laughs> random Canadian version of well, it well <laughs> let me tell you before I get into um my like how I found out about it and all that stuff because you kind of brought it up a few times when I was pretty much like quickly doing some research on this mm -hmm. so pretty much it aired in like the early 2000s the source yeah. that I found said 2003 uh -huh. and pretty much at the time in like Canada this show like like all the stuff that was like on TV was very like family friendly mm -hmm. and all this stuff and this came out right at the time that Jackass and Viva La Bam, and it kind of started to turn yes. to people really liking the more like raunchy reality shock style value shock stuff. value. Yeah. Yes. So while at the early stages they were doing um, challenges like who could stay awake the longest, by like the later seasons they're doing like who can keep a dump in their pants the longest. <laughs> <and> like, <laughs> all this crazy. <laughs> I guess after I know, six seasons, you, you start, like, yeah. running out of ideas. But that's what I'm saying. Like, they just really got to kind of, like, run with it and go crazy with it, you know? Because we only watched, like, I've I only seen showed three you the relatively episodes PG out of, like, ones. the, like, 80 episodes yes. they've had. I've only seen three of them. I was going to say, also, before we get into it, like, I want to read you just a description, just okay. in case for anybody who's, like, I don't even know what the heck you're talking yeah. about. Obviously, like Jordan said, go check it out. All the episodes are free. Yeah. But just a queef, like queef. <laughs> oh, oh. What? what happened over there? What was that word? <laughs> quick <laughs> preview. Oh, my gosh. Jordan's the one drinking. I haven't even I know. been drinking. Yeah. You had a cupcake. Oh, it my got gosh. you crazy. I got sugar rush. Okay. <laughs> It says, Kenny vs. Spenny was a Canadian comedy television series starring Kenny Hotz and Spencer Rice, who faced each other in various competitions. The loser of each episode performed an act of humiliation, usually, usually selected by the winner. Hotz and Rice created the series in addition to serving as executive producers, and it was typically shot in their townhome in Toronto. The pilot was filmed in Los Angeles. Based oh, mostly out of the house they shared. As of November 2008, the show airs on CBC, Global Showcase, it goes on. Um, 
Um, and now it's obviously on YouTube and Which all this stuff. Kenny Hotz, his channel is the one that uploaded everything. Um, I The little bit I saw on IMDb of this, of like the trivia stuff, is that Kenny Hotz is kind of an interesting fella. Yes. Yeah. Well, I think that's pretty evident even in the thing. I was going to say one more thing yeah. before we move on from this too. In 2000, or in 2000, on their third season, the creator of the South Park found them. And oh, then that's wow. how it ended Trey up Kennedy kind of becoming mainstream Stone. in America. Very cool. Because they saw and thought it was really funny. And I guess um, pretty much like they were childhood friends. That is true. And that they ended up creating this show. And at the beginning, they were still like really cordial like it was they are their characters but obviously amplified for tv but pretty much by the end they really were like those characters Mm -hmm. and like the relationship was like very frayed yeah Um, by the end they weren't actually friends and after the show stopped airing they fell out of touch for a long time like they weren't friends um but then after a couple years and scars kind of healed over they became friends and now they like tour together and like oh, do cool. stuff together and like uh talk about the show and all that stuff because this a is a very time. nostalgic show i feel like yeah. for the group of people who like you said maybe came up with jackass they feel that way about that crew because yeah. there us. was in jackass too a lot of falling outs between people and then coming back and stuff and like a lot of addictions and all that so it makes sense this is a smaller cast it's only yeah. two people that like same it's a things very would happen. small. Yeah. And like, all in their house. And I know. All, like, it's a lot. Like, so Spenny seems like a dude who doesn't want to put up with any crap and almost like OCD tendencies in, in the sense that, like, he seems very particular about things. I'm like, yeah. what what made you? Because well, I get it that later maybe money was the factor of why he yeah. kept doing it. But what made you think from the beginning, I'm going to put myself in this situation and possibly never make money on it, yeah. but just put myself through hell. You know, well, I think the thing is, and one of the things they were talking about that why the South Park creators were drawn to it mm-hmm. is it's pretty much in their like view, the best representation of a male friendship, like just yeah. two guys odd trying to couple. best each other. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's very odd couple esque. We have Kenny, who's mm-hmm. very like, you know, kind of rough around the edges, likes to cheat and like bend yeah. the rules. And then we have Spenny, who's the very like clean and, you know, likes to follow the rule book and mm-hmm. pretty much watching them together. They have so many good episodes of their, like, just the craziness that ensues, even in episodes that seem like they would be so boring. Like, they do a really They do a good good job job of keeping you interested in Mm -hmm. everything that's going on. Now, they're shorter episodes. They're only, like, 22 minutes. Right. So that's nice, too, that you're not doing, like, a full hour, because I feel like that would be a little too much then. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. But but. so you want to tell them about the three episodes that we watched? Yes. So I think we watched first the Who is Funnier. Yes. Which I... Which is such a crazy episode. Okay. This episode might rank in my top five. Okay. I feel like this is... Because I feel like even back then, I wasn't a huge fan of the like potty humor. Uh Uh-huh. Which even this episode has it. Like everyone does. Every episode had the potty humor. But the ones that are a little bit more just like... What's the word I'm looking for? Mature. If that's even possible for the show. A little bit more refined, refined is what you're looking yes. for. Like, so, it's not just all fart jokes the whole time. Yes. I feel like it's, like, really the – without having a script, I mm. assume they didn't because the source I said that yeah. I saw said they didn't. Well, I want to talk to you about that later because – I kind of uh, we'll talk about it later. Because yeah, I, I have a question for you actually I, about exactly, that. I think I know where we're going. Watching this now, I'm like, okay. It you seems know. like everybody's in on it. Yeah. Yes, but it said they don't have a script. Okay. So, Which like wrestling. Yeah. No script. There could know. be some parts where we're like, we know we're gonna hit these points, but not so much. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, we watched Who's Funnier. We watched Who Could Stay Awake the Longest, and then what was the last one we watched? Um, oh, Who Could Drink who can More dr- Beer. Drink More Beer. Yeah. The Who's Funnier one though is crazy. It's hilarious. Uh, we're just gonna tell you the premise of this so that you'll want to watch this because well, i don't want to give too much okay that's fine because, we're not gonna yeah. tell you but let's suffice it to say there is a prank that's done that is like the most morbid <laughs> like cold-hearted thing but is hilarious yeah. the, re- the reaction that happens yes it's so good but also like it, this could have only gotten away in early 2000s. Well, like, this would not fly now, this type I of stuff. I was going to say, a lot of the stuff that I was reading was saying that people just find it, like, outright offensive. Oh, it's very Which, offensive. I feel like that was the same thought process or reaction people had to Jackass and stuff. Jackass like, was more, like, offensive because of the physicality behind it. Yeah, but, but they were, like, 
Yeah. They were doing stuff that they were doing caused stuff a too. lot of and uproar. Look, remember early seasons of South Park, too? You brought that up. Those were super offensive mm-hmm. and stuff. Like the people, I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying, like, yeah. we're talking about this was the time when this yes. is why... Yes. They were getting signed. Yeah. And it's not like they they're this. it's not like they're doing anything like roofing a girl or something where it's no. like, okay, that's like not forgivable. The this, damages to each other. The damages to each other. It's like, you know, yeah. they knew what they signed up mm-hmm. for. It's like, okay, this isn't the most politically correct thing, no. but like you're not hurting anyone yes. else. And they have a great like I was telling Jordan and even I think two out of the three episodes we watched. Uh, Kenny has like a holistic doctor yes. he goes to oh visit gosh, who becomes like a recurring character and like cracking me. he was like they my do favorite character such a great job creating this like world and it's just amazing like yeah. I think they did a really yeah like they did a great I job. get so much nostalgia watching yeah it, see the, the one thing that's a little bit hard for me is mm-hmm. the vomit stuff like you oh, know they do a lot like of I'm that. not a big fan I I legitimately have a phobia yeah. of vomit. So like in almost every episode we watch, there's, there's like something. a part where like someone is either throwing up yeah. or like almost about to. And like yeah. same thing in Jackass, same thing in Viva La Bam, same thing in like mm-hmm. all like the the whatever that one was with Steve O and and Pontius Chris Pontius or whatever his name was. Um, they all oh, had that know. kind of stuff too, right? You know, so like this isn't anything new, but like back, I was telling you, like back in the day, I was trying to be cool with my friends and be like, it doesn't bother me. Where now I'm like, I don't, I don't like you're it. Like, so we've you're been married for six yeah, years. Yeah, you're normally it's like, fine. don't watch this part. Just yeah. don't watch this well, part. I honestly even forgot because I know, like I said, I know that there are episodes where they're doing some really gross yeah. things, like keeping a dump in their pants or who yeah. could do the loudest, longest fart or like, yeah. There's things they do that are like really disgusting. But then there's gross stuff that makes me laugh, like when he had to perform fellatio oh on an God. English cucumber. <laughs> like, that was just funny. That was, uh, that was awesome. But that's what I'm saying. Like, I even forgot. I thought, oh, yeah, like, who could stay awake the longest? Like, that can't even be gross. But yeah. then they always find a way to make it And I don't know gross. if we mentioned this. The reason why I I equated it to Impractical Joker is because they do a competition, and whoever lo- wins gets to have the other person be humiliated yes. in a way of their choice. So there's the always a, choice. Yeah, the winner's yes. choice. So there's always a humiliate. Well, I'm sure some of them probably don't end in a humiliation. No, they have like a draw. Like a draw. There's, so like there's just always no other but options. Yeah. I'm sure that Kenny wins most of them because every episode I watched, Kenny won. But you said yeah. Spenny wins some oh, yeah, of them he does. at least. But mm-hmm. like, it seems like that might be a little bit harder because he doesn't cheat. He doesn't so cheat. So it, it makes it. But yeah, they yeah. get to then pick like, okay, now you have to do this thing. It's like your punishment for losing. Which yeah. Is always so ridiculous. I and remember. Gross and <laughs> I think it's the episode, the first episode. The person who loses their humiliation is they have to go to a movie theater opening night. Oh no! With there's a no like a known twist, and they have to go and sh- say what the twist spoil is. Spoil it for and everyone. Spoil in it line. for everybody oh my in gosh, line. That's the and worst. I'm like, those are the humiliations that you're like, you feel Cringe. you're like, yeah, you feel your skin crawl. You're like, yeah. oh my gosh, I cannot imagine having to be in that situation. But yes. they do a lot of stuff too. That's like how to lose the most weight, or like uh, the person who can gain the most weight, or yeah. who can like they do one that's like. Um, who could be homeless? And so they take away their like credit cards and all this stuff. Yeah. And Spenny takes it seriously. Go figure. And he's like out on the street, and like the first money he gets, he like buys sunblock because he doesn't want to get oh, cancer. That's so funny. But then Kenny see the OCD tendencies. Yes. That's what but I'm then about. Kenny goes to his bank, and they obviously know him. And he's like, "Hey, I lost my credit card. That, like, can you give me money?" And then he like goes on fine dining, and he like has hilarious. all this stuff, and then. It's just like so funny. Well, like, for the beer one, his big twist was he filled, he was drinking non alcoholic beer yes. and Spenny didn't know. Well, what was hilarious about that is he says, like, yeah, part of the stipulation is I get to pick the beer. And then he, like, the ones for Spenny are wrapped in white tape and the ones for him are wrapped in red tape. Yeah. And if you were just doing that with your friend, like, they'd be like, what the heck? Who cares? We'll all drink from the same thing. But because they couldn't show. The beer's yes. label. Well, they it had makes to keep sense. track of how many each person drank, yes. and the label had to be covered. That's what I'm saying. So it ends it up like didn't seem weird. It didn't seem weird, yeah. and he ends up getting like a which is the ingenious of Kenny because he finds ways mm-hmm. to cheat that just don't seem obvious, and that's like <laughs> almost what's so smart about him, right? That's like, what I'm saying. Yeah, it's there's like the a work lot hard or work ones. smart people. You yeah, know? and there's one that's like who's the better parent, and like I don't want to give away all the like ways he yeah. cheats, but he always finds a way. And it's just ingenious. I think it's like the funniest one. There's some ones that are like the like who could stay awake longer that yeah. or like who could lose the most weight. Like you can't. 
It's hard she to did, cheat but that. even in those ones, their approaches and how they go about doing it is so well, funny. What's it's crazy so is different. Spenny didn't drink any caffeine. He didn't take any supplements. Yeah. Kenny the whole time was like taking supplements and drinking caffeine. Yeah. I'm like, you, like, Spenny kept up with him, too, also, for not doing any of that. Jordan and I were saying, like, spoiler alert, on the who could stay awake the longest, they stay awake for 81 hours. Yes, which if you've ever watched the movie Insomnia, what? I think, like, at, like, five, five days, you start, like, hallucinating yeah. and going crazy Yeah, well, they were talking about stuff. how they, like, were losing their voice and, yeah. like, all this stuff was happening. Because your body doesn't like, have any time to rest. Yes, I was like, oh, my gosh. But it's just... That's crazy. It's, there's some that I, like... I did not like the episodes. Yeah. There's one that's like, who's the best chef? And I'm like, who the heck cares? This yeah, is and not, like, like nothing funny, that funny happens. There and... are so many good ones. Like, I highly recommend it if you're like a fan of Jackass. Yeah. And stuff so like these that. two guys were comedians because I, yeah, the, the, they're the, like, like taglines is like two comedians who live in a house together. But what's funny to me, and maybe it, that happens more, but like I've seen these three episodes. I'm pretty sure I saw one episode you showed me like a long, long time ago. I've never seen Spenny actually like crack a joke or a smile. Like, is his comedic style like no, dry wit? You, or you heard him crack a joke because then he was like, "You're a beast merchant God's character now." Like yeah. his thing is a but little bit more like demeaning like, laughs and like, it. like no. he, he'll say a joke, but like his face is He's just being so more dry. More like melancholy and it's like yeah. more like just cuts to like Kenny. maybe that's his like style of humor yeah. right like where kenny the... is more like improv like making random songs and like just trying yeah. to mess with spenny and make yeah. him like angry and all this oh stuff. it's so good it's so, so good the million dollar question i have is and maybe you've seen it in your research i don't know but i'm like this show does seem to be quote unquote fake now like you yes. said there's probably not a script or anything but i'm right. like there has to be some development in well, some of these things where they're like right. this is good. like almost a little bit of acting and like being like okay w we're gonna do this and them both going into it mm -hmm. knowing we're gonna play it up but yeah. like when the cameras are off maybe they're not like giving yeah. each other crap and stuff like well, that my th from what i've read and also like kind of what i thought is that the reason they got signed on for the show is because obviously they had this like banter and people yeah. saw something in them and it was like, wow, like I can think this is really signed off. Like they filmed their pilot in LA and yeah, everything. Which like, is cool. They got signed on. Mm -hmm. People knew the product they were getting. I think a lot of times in the early seasons of shows, they really don't have scripts. Like yeah. I think they literally have so many ideas. Yeah. This may be just me being hopeful, but I'm just sharing what my thought is. Like yeah. I feel like in the first couple of seasons, they really were just like mm -hmm. doing it. But I do think as time goes on, they need a little bit more like assistance. There's also a lot more production that goes into the show and yeah. preparation. I don't know how the other person wouldn't have some kind of idea or yeah. like obviously by like the third episode, Spenny is aware that Kenny is constantly cheating mm -hmm. and like has to find it. Like, you know what I mean? But the reason I agree with you is because in the episode that we talk about who is funnier at one point, Spenny's like, turn off the cameras, like, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. But then like, there's still a little crack in the door. So the camera crew can like, yeah, and focus it's like, in on him. And I'm like, them right there. This scene, but also I wonder if we're just desensitized Maybe. because now it's 2022 and we've seen so many reality shows and we're just like this, none of it's real. And it's well, like, it could be the whole idea too, you know, like what was it? The Hills or whatever, or the OC or what, or, what was the show where they were like, it wasn't necessarily fake, but they, yeah. they, they like fabricated situations and would spread gossip yeah. and stuff to make the drama well, like maybe it's the same is, thing in this does it really matter no it doesn't like and that's it doesn't the thing. Because it's funny it really doesn't because like yeah. one way or another it's still funny i'm yeah. just always like my where my biggest hang up is like i could see this being real except for the fact that i'm just like i don't buy someone like spenny putting up with this for that long well i do think they got paid a lot of money yeah and if that's the yeah. thing if like from the get-go it was I like you're gonna get paid a ton of money Spenny had like a weird like thing where he thought like I can like do this the right way and like mm -hmm. people could see me win and like you know what I mean he seems like that yeah. type and kind of speaking of the wrestling thing you and I are both I just finished and you're still reading the McFoley have yeah. a nice day book and even when his ear is mm -hmm. off of his body and, and the nurse off. is holding it and he's like can I keep my ear and she's like no why do you care it's all fake anyway and he's like He's like, you're holding, you're holding my, my, ear. my ear. Like this is obviously not fake. So I'm like, I understand why wrestlers have to be like, get out of there with that. Yeah. Like I'm literally putting my life on the line. Like, obviously, there's storylines that are yeah. like 
not always uh, the realist, clearly. Mm-hmm. Um, but sometimes you they really get hurt. People don't get buried alive by the Undertaker. <laughs> I guess not. What? But I think the same thing with Teddy versus Betty. I'm like, even if they do have some points they want to hit, I do think there's enough improv and like magical moments that are just like good organically. Yeah, and you're right. A lot of people do things that seem crazy to me for the love of their hobby, right? Yes. Like, I might be like, man, I would never like stay with Kenny. I'd be like a week there. I'd be like, peace out. This ain't worth it. Where the wrestling point again, it was like the whole Mick Foley thing. His ear literally got ripped off and they're like, we need to take you to the hospital. He's like, wait, I got to find a camera guy. We need to document this. And like, he's so into his craft that even when a body part is like ripped off of him, he's like looking for the photo op and how to make Mm -hmm. it cool and stuff. And it's like, okay, maybe spending is so into like the comedic. Yes just hobby that he's like no i don't care anything you do to me is fair game as long as we yeah. get something good out of well, it well it was funny to me too because i was like i'm gonna ask your opinion on this okay. so i guess that spenny did mm-hmm. a interview back in like it's been so long now i think it said like 2015 so yeah. even that is which like would have been after ago. the show probably by but quite it's a few after years the show. yeah but he was pretty much being interviewed and he was like oh like people nowadays are so used to will ferrell comedy it's just mm-hmm. like stupid like you know, like pretty much like lowbrow, I guess yeah. is the word. Like our, like my sense of style, like we're like sad to see our era come to a close. Mm. And in my head, I was like, I always personally thought like the whole dynamic of like how Kenny would like cheat and Spenny trying to like, you know, stick to his morals, but also just mm. kind of like you see him struggle. Like I always thought that was funny. Yeah. But I feel like on the surface level, they make a lot of fart jokes. They yeah. make a lot of like um, challenges that are surrounded by that, like humor. Mm-hmm. So why is Will Ferrell humor stupid comedy? Do well, you know what I mean? I'm like, I don't really 100% other thing, understand. It's that other thing, too, where he's probably like, we're making these jokes as a commentary and satire yeah. on the jokes themselves, which right. is probably how Spenny views it, Where because he's his humor is so dry. He's probably one of those people, like we were saying Andy Kaufman-esque almost, yes. in like some scenes where he's like, he leans so hard into his character that he takes it to a point of uncomfortableness, and that's where the funny is, where you're like, you want you feel bad for him until a certain point where you're like, okay, this is just ridiculous now what's going on. Like, Mm -hmm. and so maybe that's the whole thing he's saying where he's like, you know, Will Ferrell is just like this, like, I'm going to yell really loud and be like, blah, blah, blah. And that's the funny where he's like, no, I'm committing to my character. And like, I've literally become my character to the point where like, even when it's not funny, I keep doing it until it is funny. Right. Maybe Maybe that's what he means. That's to me. That's what I think. I feel like spending. I just feel like it. I guess let me rephrase my question. If you were going to recommend this to somebody, Mm -hmm. would you say this is like highbrow, very like aware? No, I would say this is the Canadian Jack. Like I would say this is the Canadian Viva La Bam is Mm -hmm. what I would say this is. That's how I would describe it to someone. I feel like there would be a very specific type of person. Yeah. I would recommend this to yeah and off the top of my head i can't really think of it <laughs> there's a very specific type of, i don't know that person but there's a very specific Although type I of person have been, i've been telling jordan since we've been together like we have to watch kenny versus mm-hmm. betty and i think i think you said like we maybe watched like half an episode and you were like no like this is not okay but you were really laughing at some oh there's parts ones. where i was cracking up yeah, yeah. the, the part like... where they're like how many beers can you drink and spenny is like super drunk and he's pissed and he goes outside and he throws the trash can at the wall and it bounces off and hits him in the face <laughs> it's like that is funny that yeah. is hilarious <laughs> it's just it's like a very yeah it's very unique i yeah. honestly feel like everybody needs to go and watch like just like pick, which one would you recommend out of the three out of the three i would definitely recommend the who's, who's funnier, funnier only yeah. because like the whole premise of that it's one hilarious. is so killer i also feel like that's a good episode even though it's not the first episode you yeah. immediately it's know like who they two, are you immediately are aware of mm-hmm. like you're immediately in on the joke yeah you definitely <laughs> get it like it's yeah. not hard to get it's who good, these people and like are. jordan said it's like 22 minutes yeah it's like 22 minutes an episode you watch them like it, it is it does feel very nostalgic because it's like filmed in standard definition it's yeah, like the quality yeah is the just... quality is not so great like it definitely feels like you're watching something from like 2003 and it it just it cracks me up so i'm like this is the stuff i used to live on like the that's what i'm mtv2 saying. vh1 type yeah. of just like 
crazy reality shows mm-hmm. you know this is like this was my lifeblood in high school i love it and here it is again you here know it is. so like now the whole like jackass four or whatever they're on that they just film like i don't want to watch this anymore because now i'm old enough to see that they're old enough to know i'm scared for you <laughs> like why are you still doing this where yeah. when you're young you feel invincible and you watch other young people feel yeah. invincible and you're like ah this is cool this well is good. it's funny because you and i were trying to watch the dane cook vicious circle yeah. last night and i was like watching it and i'm like wow like i know that the 90s are like very hyped and they have been hyped for a long time but there is something i feel like about people our age that the early 2000s had was the just gems. such a unique time. It had the gems. <laughs> such a unique time, and I love it. We were on that weird, like, transition between, like, all the craziness of the 90s, like, the crazy colors and just over-the-top everything and, like, extreme with a capital X, like... 90s were insane and then i feel like we came to this point where the insanity was still there but we were becoming a little bit more like 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 mature type i was gonna say for me it seemed like safe edgy like yes. hot topic and avril lavigne and yes. like girls next door and well it's like even freaking this. dane cook on that he's wearing this giant yes. like cloth wristband i'm like it's so early so 2000s early 2000s and like right hummer there. limos and like yeah. you know what i mean like the prom dresses that were like the weird satin on the outside or they had or the something. two different designs yes, one on top with the, with one the zebra on and the hot pink like there's just something that i'm like wow the early 2000s like the the greatest thing i get so nostalgic anytime i watch a movie where a girl is wearing three uh um tank tops one over the other i'm like <laughs> but they just get slightly bigger straps yes. i'm like this is this is what everyone i knew lace out yeah, in this the bottom is everyone the i knew wore skirt. like three tank tops on top of each other for some weird reason i also feel like it was like on the cusp before like everything was ruined by the internet which yes. i know sounds so crazy but i'm like now it's like we were like on the internet it was so now it's so angry about everything. I know. We were on the internet and not that so it was MySpace. novel and fun. Yes. But absolutely. yeah, we hadn't gotten to the point where like all the shit lords are on yeah, the Yeah. Which, you know. you know, some good has come from that too. Yeah. But I'm just like, yeah, it was such a like ha- different time. Having a freaking iMac that you could like see inside with like the blue plastic. Like the, everything about the early 2000s was just golden. At least for people, I think, in our yeah. age show. I think yeah, that and that's what people the next generation is going to say about like the 2010s. Of course, probably. It's of like, course. Oh, the 2010s were the best. Dab, you know, like <laughs> they're going to love it. We're going to so. be like, no, <laughs> be like, no, no, that was nowhere near as good as. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, the Kenny versus Spenny, it just makes me so like nostalgic for that time. Yeah, definitely viewer discretion advised on these ones. Um, well, they give you that message they before do at the you beginning. even watch. So. Um, and what's nice is the ones on YouTube don't have any bleeps, so you get to hear all the glorious curse words just <laughs> without bleeps, the like only they would. On bleep, like the like the name of the beer <laughs> yeah name of the beer like any of that stuff you could get sued for but like yeah. language they, all the other stuff not so much really did you see anything like is spenny or kenny doing anything like projects now or no just what i was saying before about like since they've reconnected they like go on comedy tours yeah. or do like interviews talking so it's not about like, the like show. a new tv show that one of them's doing not that something. i saw i know that again i could be wrong just based off of what i read they said after the kenny versus spenny show aired they both went on to do their own like adventures which mm-hmm. included like shows and stuff yeah. like that but not anything like yeah. long term but they're friends again that's all good. good again that's good yeah time heals all wounds takes a little bit of time and i'm sure they made a lot of money from it so they're fine yeah yeah so you're welcome ron this was an episode pretty Thank much just you, for ron. you yes. <laughs> maybe some of the brave souls who are hey bailey no some of the brave souls who are gonna try and uh and uh listen not knowing i mean i listen to some shows when i'm like i don't know the topic at all just because i want to hear them talk to about be it intrigued yeah. to spend the 22 minutes to yeah. watch an episode exactly exactly yes. so um if you like this episode we're going to be back with some other ones in a few weeks my mm-hmm. voice is finally starting to come back if you tried to listen to the train wreck of an episode from last week where we covered kung pao enter the fist with special guest tim france of the professional casual network uh i was just getting over COVID. i was kind of on the tail end i was coughing yeah. up a storm i feel like my voice has stayed oh, yeah. pretty well through this episode so i think by next week 
I'll be able to like maybe get back on yes. and, and do a full episode. And... Also, we need to do an episode with Jason and Mindy. I would maybe love Maybe just airing our grievances about moving cross moving. country. I know. It's <laughs> it's rough times. It's been so fun listening to them and hearing yeah. all their stories. But I'm like, man, it brings me back. <laughs> I know. To, and we're going to have a move coming up here soon yeah. as well, which is not as quickly as we were hoping for. Yeah. But it's going to happen in the next few months, which is yeah. nice. Uh, we have some episodes coming out soon. I've asked our listeners on Instagram if uh tell us what you want because i want to start doing shows that our listeners actually want to hear right instead of me just picking something and doing it so i'm like what do you want to hear i got a few responses but hey if you didn't see the instagram story or something like right. write in on instagram also or, if jordan is doing kenny versus spenny i'll do anything he'll do any- anything but some of the suggestions we got taken was one of them oh so i haven't seen that movie in forever I haven't seen so that in forever yeah that would be a, a a good one to do uh someone said kazam i'm very happy that someone said kazam i don't know shaquille that one. o'neal stars as a genie oh, from the 90s movie yeah. yeah so i'm excited That's for that um of course cover. my friend robbie from the rue interviews uh he had to come up with a super random one i've never heard of the history of future folk it's a, a movie about a fake band called Future Folk. And I asked him, I'm like, is it in the same vein as Spinal Tap, like a mockumentary? He's like, no, you just have to watch it to find out. But it's got like a 93% on Rotten Tomatoes. So okay. we'll probably cover that one because I'm go. just covering shows for individual people at this point. I mean, why not? Um, and then someone said they wanted us to do Commando, the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, which is one of the few 80s Arnold Schwarzeneggers, like 80s, 90s Arnold Schwarzenegger movies I've never seen. Oh, you've never heard of it? I've heard of it. I've just never actually watched it all the way through. Okay. But it's one of the few Arnie movies that's left. So I'm excited to see that. Like you know him on a nickname basis. Yeah, me and Arnie. We're good. I just, he just got in that car accident. He called me up afterwards. Uh. He was like, I'm good. You know, it's all cool. Um, But yeah, so we're going to be covering some fun stuff like that. But write in if you have something you want us to cover. Mm -hmm. We'll literally cover anything, especially if you're a patron. Yep. We'll give you it all. Speaking of that, go check out wreckmypodcast.com. We have a Redbubble store. We have an Instagram, a YouTube, a Patreon. And uh, that's everything. That's all we're going to do. Yeah. That's Kenny versus Spenny. There you go. That's good. Thanks, Madison, for being here. That was so much fun. That was so much fun. All right, guys. We'll see you next week. Bye. Wreck my podcast. Wreck my podcast.